I saw a question in the chat I'd love to throw your way, which is, well, what do you do if you're that person who's trying to do what you did at CNN? You're, you're trying to encourage everybody. You're trying to shout out. You're trying to appreciation. And you just keep running into a, you know, people who are both resistant or pessimistic, um, you know, that place of you're that person who's actually trying and other people just won't. Well, so there's a couple things. Number one, um, at some point, you may have to have uh, that moment in the mirror after the high five of honesty about whether or not you're in the right place or the right relationship. I mean, sometimes uh, trying too hard to make something work. Uh, there's this uh, cognitive bias that I know you're very well aware of, Brendan, called sunk costs. The longer you stay with something and the more time you've sunk into it, the more energy that you've sunk into it, the harder it is to let go of it. We've all stayed in relationships, for example, in our personal life way too long, friendships, romantic relationships. And then you finally break up and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I not do that years ago? We do this at work and with teams all the time. And so at some, sometimes it's just, it's just, it's not even you, it's just not the right fit for you. And so not making it personal is a really important thing. If uh, you haven't given it uh, the old college try and you really authentically have not stayed at it long enough, then um, I would recommend bringing even more empathy. Like when people don't reciprocate back, it's usually because something horrible is happening in their life. They're in so much pain or there's so much crap that they're managing or they're not transformed like you are that they don't even know what they don't know. And so feeling kind of sorry for people like that always is like a, a, a force field for me, Brendan, so that I don't get their negative dog shaking energy on me. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Hey, Mel, uh, Vicki here. I would like to know, how do you get back on track when someone else crashes your morning routine? Okay, give me a specific example. So this morning at uh, seven o'clock in the morning, my mom got out of bed, she has dementia, and uh, she couldn't find her dog who was laying in the bed right beside her. So that's about the time that I start my routine. You know, I hadn't made my bed yet, hadn't washed my hair yet. And um, it was just really hard to get back on track today. I'm sure. And it's probably also hard given that she has dementia because you can't predict when that's gonna happen. Correct. So um, let's go to the kindness piece, okay? Mm -hmm. um, being kind to yourself, in my opinion, is also accepting life as it is and not making yourself wrong for the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to mm -hmm. deal with your life as it is. See, we all have expectations and I think uh, there's a lot, I, I, I think that there are times where personal development can equal an attempt to be perfect. And that's not what I believe at all. Mm -hmm. I think we're all works in progress. I think unless you wanna be a monk and live on your own, there's no way that you're gonna be able to be in control every single day of your life. And that the skill truly everyone is to ride the up and down waves of life and not have those waves that come crashing over take you down and leave you in a down. Uh -huh. And, you know, we want to be more like the raft that's riding the waves. And what takes you down even further when your mom who has dementia gets up and it really just, you know, blows a hole in the way that your day is supposed to start is you mentally then start to beat yourself up for the fact that it didn't go how you wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And the real skill in life, because there's always going to be ups and downs, everybody, always. And you don't want it any other way because confidence, uh, resilience, courage, it's like steel. It's forged in fire. Even in those low moments, you've got the biggest opportunity to build your confidence, to build your resilience. Resilience is the ability to not let your emotions hijack you when life happens, it's the ability to ride the waves and you have a particular reality that I don't have right now. 
you have a mother with dementia. And accepting that that is going to derail certain things and learning how to be kind with yourself and make and allow yourself to ride that wave without making it mean I suck, I blew it, today sucks, we're off the rails, I might as well not wash my hair, I might as well not <laughs> make the phone call. Now that this one thing happened, the whole thing is screwed. The real thing is, okay, we're off track for a half an hour and I only have five minutes now. What's the one thing I could do to ground myself? And I'm going to tell you what the one thing is. Put your hands on your heart. You've just right. dealt with this issue with your mom. It's upsetting because she's got dementia, which is upsetting, I'm sure. You put your hands on your heart. You go, I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm loved. Today is still going to be a good day. Uh -huh. And then high five yourself in the mirror and get back out there. And skip the part where you make yourself wrong. Okay? Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. And look, there are going to be some days, everybody. I've had a hell of a six weeks. Uh, I, I've probably done this sucker like three or four times a day. There ain't no shame in that. There is what you don't want to do is just try to white knuckle your way through things. Put yourself in pause. Give yourself what you need. Be kind to yourself because that's going to be kind of what you need. Like if you think about this from a sports analogy, if you blow it, you blow that free throw shot. You blow the field goal. You blow the penalty kick. You're like going like this. What does your team do? What does the coach do? It's all right. It's all right. Shake it off. Come on. We got this. We got this. High five. Get back out there. You got to learn to do that for yourself. Because you can't rely on other people to do it. And when you learn to build that in for yourself, that's where, wow, you start to tap into the superpower inside you. You know, I think you forgot that when you were learning to crawl, I might've said this on the last training. I just love this data point. Confidence is in you, everybody. Resilience is in you. You came into this world perfect, whole, and complete. When you learned to walk, you fell on average 17 times an hour. You didn't lay there on the ground and go, well, I guess this is it. This is my life. Never going to learn to walk. No, you tapped into that confidence and that resilience that was within you to get up and try again. And thankfully, babies can't talk to themselves. That's why they keep trying. You realize that. If babies could talk to themselves, they'd convince themselves to stay on the floor. Let's go to Felicia. First of all, thank you so much for coming and sharing your knowledge and passion with us. So when you were talking about the willingness to try and re, like redefining what confidence is, it struck me hard. How? Because a lot of, in the sense of most of the time when you think about confidence, you talk about confidence, competence, and everything that you need to do. But how do you get competent? Is by you taking the action. And a lot of time, because we're so focused on other people, what they think of the things we want to do, that we're not even trying. And I know for, my, for sure that's what held me back. So recently I took the action of just saying, hell with it. I'm just going to take, take a step. And what, what that was for me is putting out a conference, right? So I'm going to do a woman's conference. I've been trying to do it. I've never done it. And I just decided to reach out to experts. Whether they say yes, great. If they say no, what the heck? And lo and behold, everyone is saying yes. And I'm like, whoa. All you, all you needed to do years back. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare do that. What? Don't you dare do that. Okay. Don't you dare invalidate. Mm -hmm. I should have. You know what that is? That is literally, you just took a success and turned it into a sledgehammer. Amen. Yeah. Do not do that. You know why you didn't do it then? You weren't ready. Good point. You weren't ready. And so when you, you know, part of what I want everybody to also, like, I'm, I am so, I'm so deep in this research around mindset patterns and the way that we talk to ourselves, And this goes into the RAS. We are critics. We are not cheerleaders. And I want all of you to relearn how to be a cheerleader in your own life. Because if you don't cheer for yourself, who the hell else is going to? And if you have children or people that you mentor or people that you want to inspire, if you're not doing it for you, how are they going to learn to? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, 
you could have, you didn't. Beating yourself down over what you didn't do mm -hmm. only based on evidence decreases your motivation to take action. Mm -hmm. And so a couple things that I want to give you because I want you to do this. And that is an excellent question. Let's give her uh, amazing. Is there anything else before I go on this rant for you that you wanted to ask? No, no, go on the rant. I was just going to say, how do you get that level of confidence every single time to take the action when you I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you out. first of all it's a push it's not a feeling so you're going to use the five second rule 75 times a day the moment you because there's this gap like this is where all of the research and the work and look the book has been out for four years millions of copies 33 languages most importantly tremendous research there's a five second window everybody that defines your entire life there's a five second window that will determine what this conference is and isn't. It's this window between hesitation and action, between confidence and doubt, between courage and fear, between inspiration and hesitation. And if you think for longer than five seconds, what we know based on research is the subconscious part of your brain takes over and you're screwed because now all the old habits and questioning and hesitation just start spinning. And now you're trapped in your old patterns. But when you close the loop by counting backwards, five, four, three, two, one, counting backwards is critical because it requires focus and it turns on your prefrontal cortex. You now have a moment where you've got the part of the brain activated that gives you focus and control. So you got a chance to try. If you don't move within those five seconds, you'll be still be thinking about calling that person five days from now because this part of the brain took over. And so you're gonna do five, four, three, two, one, and you're gonna push yourself. Here's something else I want everybody to start doing, especially because it's cheesy. You ready? I started doing this during the pandemic. And um, you know, look, the pandemic kicked me in the face, just like everybody else. Okay. I mean, everybody's life turned upside down for me personally. It had always been my dream to host a daytime talk show. And I got five minutes notice at CBS broadcast center, right after we finished taping our 157th episode of the year that they found COVID in the building. The show was canceled. Grab your crap and get out. No time to say goodbye to 135 people. Dreams gone out the window. By the time I drove back to Boston, Houghton Mifflin had canceled the book contract. Within a week, every speech that had been booked for a year had been put on pause. And look, I, I'm okay. I, I've been saving money like it's my job for the last five years because my origin story is 12 years ago, I was about to lose my house. I couldn't pay for groceries. I didn't have a job. So I started like feeling like, what am I going to do? Holy cow, I can't go back there. But now I'm in a pandemic and now my kids are coming home and they're freaking out and I want to kill them all because I'm angry that they're not feeling more grateful that they're safe and they're bitching about spring break and I'm going on and on and on and I'm going down this negative spiral. And then then people that I know start to die. And then it gets really scary. And so I started waking up every morning, just like you probably did. And I'm like, my gray hair is down to here. And my eyes are like sagging down. And I didn't have any words. I couldn't give myself a pep talk. I would stare at myself in that mirror. And I'm like, damn, my, my you look tired. You look terrible. Whew, woman. You know, like, I don't even know if you should like leave the bathroom. Like I literally had no words. So one morning I'm looking at myself and I'm just feeling so down that all I could honestly do was raise my hand and give myself a high five in the mirror. That was it right there. That's right, Jill. Just, I, I, that's all I could do. And it felt good. The next morning I woke up. Same problems, same dark circles, same gray reverse skunk thing happening with my hair, same no speaking business, no money, come, no nothing, same crabby kids, same like, I did. and I see myself in the mirror and I just high five myself again. And it felt so good. Like, okay, you got this because you know what? 
try, try this tomorrow morning. It's impossible to high five yourself and go, boy, you look fat. Impossible, impossible. And so I started high fiving myself in the mirror every morning and I started putting it on social media and it has spread like wildfire. And I started digging into the research. There's all this incredible stuff. I can't wait to teach you in future stuff around something called neurobics. I know it's a stupid name, but we're talking to the world's leading researcher at UCLA. This relates to dyslexia. It relates to neuroplasticity and the way that neuropathways develop and connecting the right and the left side of the brain when you do physical movement with something. It is so amazing. And so we have created this whole series of things that I call the high five habits that are simple little things that you do that remove the lint and that teach you how to cheer for yourself. So one thing I want all of you to be putting into your daily practice is don't you dare ever leave a bathroom without high-fiving yourself in the mirror, particularly because it's cheesy. You will start to notice that you look forward to it. You will start to realize that you don't cheer for yourself. You will start to see, I realized, Felicia, that for decades, I used to stand in front of that mirror and be like, look at my neck. Oh my God, my chin. I'm like a freaking puppet. I mean, you could kill somebody with this thing. Get out of here, Jay Leno. Check out Mel Robbins' chin. You would literally, you don't even realize how negative that dialogue is. And so one high five at a time, we're going to start removing it. And one, five, four, three, two, one, trying, remove it. When you see that you are now feeling this wave of insecurity and the lint is building in your mind because you're now so focused on what they're thinking, locate yourself back in here. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.